Object pools, similar to low-level memory pools, are very useful constructs when memory management becomes a bottleneck. After all, who wants their process to spend half of its time allocating and deallocating memory? Let me show you how to work around this problem. To measure our speed gains, let's use a benchmark timer, which you can learn about here in this video, and make some memory operations in a loop. Now here is our timer, and for example, let's simply allocate and deallocate an int many times over. This will be our timer, this will be our benchmark block, let's repeat it maybe this many times, and let's simply delete the new int. Here we have a typical deallocation and an allocation. Let's run it a few times and see what the results are. 20, 20, 21, cool, I guess that's enough. We roughly have our estimate. So now let's make a skeleton of our object pool. Of course this will be a template called object pool. And let's get some useful aliases. Let's make them compatible with what's in our standard allocators. So let's get our value type bt and a pointer which will be pointer to value type. And now the usual boilerplate. As you can see we don't want any copying to take place so our copy constructor and operator are deleted. Now it's time for our allocate and deallocate methods. We will use the new no discard attribute so our compiler will warn us when the result of this method will not be used in any way. It will return a pointer. The method will be called allocate. Let's leave it empty for now. And our deallocation method. Deallocate which cannot throw exceptions. It's a very bad practice to throw exceptions when destroying or deallocating. Empty for now and of course it needs to take a pointer. Let's get to the mid. Let's create the simplest possible object pool. For now it will have the following characteristics. It won't be thread safe and it won't support dynamic resizing. This will give us a base for future improvements. So now let's add a constant size t size this will be the size of our pool now the question is what will the pool actually contain well our pool will contain an array of items which will be our storage and a linked list of those items which will represent a pool of three objects each item will be a simple struct holding the storage for the object the pointer to the next element in the list. We can leverage the fact that the next element in the list is only used when the item is free and so we can use a union instead of the struct. So let's see this in practice. Okay, so the union, let's call it simply an item. Now we need some storage and not only any kind of storage, a properly aligned storage. Fortunately, the standard library has just the thing for us. Standard aligned storage it's a template providing, well, storage, but with proper alignment. So the size of one element will be the size of T, or maybe value type, rather, to keep it consistent. And the alignment should be also the alignment of value type, which is our type T. Well, let's call it in storage. The other element in our union will be the pointer to the next item in our linked list. Now for the actual pool itself. The pool will be a unique pointer of items, rather an array of items. And pool, and let's initialize it, item of size, size. So this is our pool of items. And now we need the pointer to the first free item in our pool. Item, next, free. And for now, let's store null pointer. Having that, we now need to fill up the bodies of our constructors and operators. Our default constructor will simply link all those items in the pool together. So now our items are linked together. And let's point the next three to the first item in our pool. Great. Copy constructor. Deleted. Unused. Move constructor. Ah, 
this one's more interesting. Should be no except. We really don't want to throw exceptions here. And let's simply move our pool from the other. Beautiful. And the same for our operator. Beautiful. So this takes care of the boilerplate. At this moment, next three points to a linked list of all three items. Here, to make an actual allocation, we simply need to take the first item of that list and make the pointer point to the next one. So let's get back to our allocate method. First, let's see if we have any space left. So if next three equals null pointer, then well, we're out of luck. So by convention, let's throw a std bad alloc. But if we have something free, let's simply use that one and move next three to the another. Well, to the next item. Now we can leverage the fact of our union layout and simply return printer broadcast to pointer from our storage. And that's it. The allocation is even simpler. We just add the pointer to the front of our free list. So first we need to cast it back to our item. Again, leveraging the layout of unions. And voila, that's it. Two simple pointer assignments. Now our pool is fully functional as a raw storage, but we need to remember we usually want to construct and destroy the objects. So let's add some helper methods. First, a construct method for constructing our objects. This will be a variadic template. Again, no discard. Of course we could use a unique pointer here, but ah, since we're dealing with raw pointers, then let's use them till the end. This is supposed to be a low level well, relatively low level memory management construct args. This will be our constructor arguments. And now we simply use an in place new and initialize a new one right here. Using, of course, perfect forwarding. And that is it. As for the object destruction, let's make a destroy method. Pointer P. Again, no except. First, let's check if we really can deal with this pointer. Well, we could add, add the same check in the deallocate method here. If you wish, go ahead. We need to manually call the destructor and then deallocate the memory itself. And again, that's it. Really simple. One line here, pretty much two lines here. Deallocation again, only two lines, few lines here. So finally, let's modify our loop to see the performance gains. We create an object pool ints pool in here we simply call pool destroy from pool construct like before this will create and destroy our simple ints so let's see what the results are but before that i just noticed that m pool really isn't collection but a unique pointer to an array so we do need to use size here sorry for that let's get back to the topic. And running it we have 7, 7, again 7. And before we had 20, 20 and 21. So we gained 3 times improvement. Which is a nice one, dare I say. Especially for such low effort. You can see it's less than a hundred lines of code. So to summarize, object posts are extremely useful in situations where allocations and deallocations are frequent. We can also improve this code a bit. Example by introducing thread safety, which would be really simple. You can either add a mutex, which will work, but it's more efficient to use a compare and swap loop, which I'll talk about in another video. We can also add dynamic resizing, and we can achieve this by not sticking to one pool of fixed size, by using a variable number of fixed size pools. So pretty much a pool of pools. When one is full, we just add another one using the list technique. So this here would be encapsulated in an item similar to this one. So I hope you found this informative. I hope you know how to create and use object pools. If you have any questions, leave them down below, give thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.